It's no secret that we're soon going to be seeing handhelds powered by the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. This chip is absolutely amazing. It's got the most powerful iGPU on the market right now, the Radeon 8060S, and GPD has their Win 5 launching soon using this chip. They took a really awesome approach to this. Uh, they've got an external battery pack, and this is because, I mean, this is not made to be a low wattage gaming chip but there's no doubt that we can actually take the wattage down and get some decent performance out of it. So in this video, I wanted to test the Max Plus 395 at a lower wattage. A lot of the stuff that we've been seeing from uh, manufacturers is like, you know, 45 watts up to 65. GPD recently posted this video here and you can see it go up to close to 35 watts. So it's not a 25 watt TDP. It's not statically set there. It does have a bit of a boost. And 1X Player recently announced their Super X. Now, this isn't quite a handheld. It's more of a tablet like the uh, Flow Z13 from Asus. This will do up to 120 watt TDP. So, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about here. In order to get good battery life out of something with the 395, I'd say a 25 watt TDP because uh, we've got 16 cores and 32 threads. Sounds pretty decent. I wanted to see how this chip handled gaming at that TDP. But the first thing I did here was run a couple benchmarks and I'm putting it up against the Ryzen Z1 Extreme and the Ryzen Z2 Extreme. For that Z1 Extreme, I'm using the ROG Ally X. For the Z2 Extreme, I've got the MSI Claw A8. And when it comes to the Max Plus 395, I'll be using the ROG Flow Z13. The first thing I did here was run Geekbench 6 and all three of these are at a 25 watt TDP. Keeping it right there is kind of performance mode on a handheld right now. So I wanted to test at this wattage. And as you can see at the very bottom, we've got that Max Plus 395 coming in with a single core of 2,783, multi 13,108. Of course, it is beating out the Z1 and the Z2, but not by that much at a 25 watt TDP. This chip does like some extra wattage. And just to show you real quick at an 80 watt TDP, it takes our single core up to 2,975 and our multi up to 19,452. Another thing to keep in mind here is the Z1E and the Z2E are 8 core 16 thread parts and the Max Plus has 16 cores and 32 threads. But this is just CPU performance. Let's move over to the GPU because that's where the big difference is. Using the OpenCL benchmark with Geekbench at a 25 watt TDP, on that Z1 Extreme with that 12 compute unit RDNA 3i GPU, we got a 27,807. The Z2 Extreme does have a more powerful GPU coming in with 16 compute units and it's based on RDNA 3.5. At 25 watts, we were up to 33,488. But that Max Plus 395 has that 40 compute unit RDNA 3.5i GPU. And even just at 25 watts, we're up to 49,527. Moving over to 3D Mark Steel Nomad, on the Z1 Extreme, we had a total score of 485, and our FPS was 4.86 FPS. On the Z2 Extreme, 560, FPS was 5.61. And coming down to that Max Plus 395, 994, and our FPS was significantly increased here up to 9.94 FPS. And finally, I ran 3D Mark Time Spy. Z1 Extreme managed a total score of 3,017. The Z2 Extreme, not coming in much higher at 3,495. And that Max Plus managed to 4,679. So again, this isn't all we can get out of that Max Plus. It definitely puts down a lot more performance once we up that wattage. At 80 watts, it takes us up to 11,251 on par with something like an RTX 4060 laptop GPU. Now, I want to move over to some side-by-side in-game benchmarks with all three of these chips. On the far left-hand side, we've got the Z1 Extreme, right in the middle, the Z2 Extreme, and finally on the far right, the Max Plus 395. Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered is one of those games that puts a hurting on any iGPU. And if you take a look at that Max Plus 395, it's actually pulling a little under 25 watts, I was pretty surprised about this and I went back and just took it up to 30 to see what it would do. This is all it's going to pull from that setup right now with the power profile I'm using. Taking it up to 30 watts does unlock a little more out of it, but all three of these kind of fell on their face at 1080p low 25 watt TDP. Z1 Extreme managed 30 FPS. The Z2 Extreme only gained 1 FPS, so we're at 31. And the Max Plus 395 gave us 38 FPS. 
Again, this is a 25 watt TDP. We can go much higher with that max plus 395, but I thought we'd do a little better than this. So let's check out another game. We're gonna go back a bit with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Low settings, 1080p. This is how I wanted to test it on all three of these chips. And that max plus 395 is coming way ahead of all of these. At the end of the benchmark, that Z1 Extreme managed 59, the Z2 Extreme up to 64, and the max plus 395 up to 82 FPS. So we've got a significant boost in performance here with that max plus, and these are using the same settings, same TDP. This is the final side-by-side -side test. Black Myth Wukong, 1080p low settings with 60% resolution scale using FSR. The Z1 managed 44 FPS, Z2 up to 49, and the Max Plus 395, we came in with 70 FPS with those same settings. We're not using any kind of frame gen here. So there are games that we're gonna get a significant boost in performance at that same kind of wattage. But then as we saw with Horizon Zero Dawn, it wasn't a huge jump. Now let's get into some dedicated gameplay. Here we have Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 1080p medium settings with FSR set to balanced. 25 watt TDP. We've got some really low clocks on the CPU and GPU here, and that's because this thing does crave a bit more. We're over 60 FPS for the most part, but when there's a lot of particle effects on screen, it may dip under. So taking it down to 900p is kind of where it's at at that 25 watt TDP. And I'll tell you, on a smaller screen, a seven inch or an eight inch display, Going from 1080 to 900 doesn't make a huge difference, especially if you can take those settings up to like medium or high. But another great thing we have with a lot of new games is frame generation. So I'm using FSR frame gen right now, and I've taken the wattage down on this chip to 20 watts. We're still using those same settings. We're at 1080p medium. I've just turned on frame generation, and now we're over 90 FPS on average with this system. So that's something we can really utilize to save battery when we're on the go. The next game I tested was God of War Ragnarok, 1080p, medium, FSR set to balance. And it does seem that at 25 watts, I had a few hiccups here and there. So I just took it up by one watt to 26. I guess, uh, you know, that CPU or the GPU needed a little more power for this one, but it did take us up there because now we're seeing an average of 75 FPS. Okay, so far we've been testing at a 25 watt TDP, but there are some games that are run at a much lower wattage and run really well like that. Forza Horizon 5, definitely an easier one to run. 1080 medium, we're at a 15 watt TDP, and performance here is great. Going up to 20 watts will take us up over 100 FPS on average, but you know, if you're looking to save that battery, because a lot of these newer handhelds hitting the market are gonna have around an 80 watt hour battery, that's kind of the maximum right now you can take it down to 15 watts, and this thing still plays just fine. Marvel Rivals actually did much better than I thought it would at a 25 watt TDP. We're at 1080 medium with FSR set to balanced, and while we do have some dips under 60, for the most part we're over it, and it feels pretty good just like it is. This is one of those games that's really hit or miss on iGPUs. And finally, Doom the Dark Ages. Just a really hard game to run right now, especially for integrated graphics. 900p low, so I had to take it way down here at a 25 watt TDP. And even then, I mean, we're not getting a steady 60 FPS with it. And it's kind of obvious what the issue is here. That CPU and GPU are really fighting for all of that 25 watts. That iGPU is only at 800 megahertz when it could clock up to 2900 if it had enough wattage. So there's no doubt that the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 could work in a handheld. But as we saw here, uh, that 25 watt TDP, we're seeing good performance. Now taking it down to 900p really unlocks a lot more, even at just 20 to 25 watts. So we'll put it right there at the low end. We'll say a 30 watt total draw from the battery. If we've got an 80 watt hour battery, that's around 2.5 hours of runtime out of something like this at a 25 watt TDP. And it might be a bit less, it really depends on how everything else is set up. And I'll tell you, that Max Plus at a 45 watt TDP really opens it up. I mean, we can throw everything at it 1080p, works great like that. But if you're looking to run that on a battery, you're not gonna get much runtime out of it at all.
Either way, it's going to be really interesting to see these handhelds hit the market, and I really do hope that AMD does launch something with the same iGPU, the 8060S, and less cores, because we really don't need 16 cores and 32 threads in a handheld. Something with 8 cores and 16 threads would be great, that way we don't have to power those extra cores that we're really not going to be using, and that extra wattage can be sent over to the GPU and the CPU, allowing us to get higher clocks even at a lower wattage like 25 watts for this chip. We'll just have to wait and see, but this is something I've been thinking of a lot recently, and I've got a few of these devices with that Max Plus 395, so I figured we'd take the wattage down and do a bit of testing, and it's definitely not all that bad. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If there's anything else you want to see tested on that 395, different wattages, you want it to face off against the Z2 Extreme with different games, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.